We're going to use a FET simulation to look at the relationship between temperature and the kinetic energy of a molecule of gas. The FET simulation that we see in front of us, we have the option of changing the volume of the chamber by simply moving it in and out. We can add and release particles by opening and closing the gate to release them and then using the pump to add large volumes at a time. We can add heat in the form of a flame or remove heat in the form of ice. We're going to focus on this control during this simulation and see how temperature affects the kinetic energy and speed of a molecule of gas. And we can add single molecules at a time by just simply clicking on the gas in the chamber over here and that's what we're going to focus on. We want to do one molecule at a time so we can avoid all the statistical calculations. We'll look at that in, in the next video. We'll see what the statistics of this gas actually look like. So let's start by injecting one molecule of gas into our chamber and this molecule is initially going to have a temperature of 500 Kelvin. So there it goes and you can see it bouncing around in the chamber perfectly. Now you can hardly see the kinetic energy curve on the graph so we'll make sure we highlight that. Kinetic energy is just given by a little bar graph and it never changes because there's only one molecule of gas in the chamber and just like the kinetic molecular theory states we have perfectly elastic collisions with the walls so no energy is lost and we would assume that it would just maintain its kinetic energy forever and ever and ever. Now let's see what happens when we knock our temperature down from 500 Kelvin down to 250. So we'll do that by putting ice into the chamber until we get it down to 250. So we're at about 300, 270, and there's 250. And you can see where our kinetic energy is now. It's about half of what it was before. So when we take our temperature from 500 down to 250, in other words, we half our temperature in Kelvin, we have half the kinetic energy. Let's bring it back up to 500, and then increase it to 1000. So there's roughly 500, there's 500 Kelvin where we basically started with. Let's see what happens now when we bring it up to 1000 Kelvin. So we're at 980, and there's just a little over 1000, that's close enough. There's 1000 Kelvin. And we can see that we went from 500 up to 1000, we've doubled our kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature. Now let's look at the effect of speed. So I'm going to change my graph here to speed and we'll hit reset first. We'll start from scratch. So now we've got speed as a function of the number of particles. And again, we'll just inject one particle so we don't have to worry about the statistical nature. And we'll see how temperature and speed are related. So I'll inject one particle and we'll start again. There we go, and you can see the speed of the particle never changes because once again we have those perfectly elastic collisions. So that particle will just continue on its merry way at the same speed forever. Now let's add some heat. We'll bring it up to a thousand. So there we are, roughly a thousand there. And you can see that this time we didn't actually double our speed. It certainly went up, but the speed did not double. And we wouldn't expect the speed to double, because if you'll recall, we previously stated that temperature is directly related to kinetic energy. And we know that kinetic energy is related to speed using the equation 1 half mv squared. So we don't have a direct relationship between kinetic energy and velocity. In fact, it's a square relationship. So we wouldn't expect the speed to double. We would expect it to go up by maybe root 2. And in fact, it goes up by a root mean square value when you start talking about many, many particles in a chamber, which we'll address later on. So we increase the temperature, the speed goes up, but it does not double. 